Hey everybody, Jake here with Jake Wu Market Research to go over an educational video on what is a trend line versus a trend zone. And this is a question that I get all the time on my Twitter, which is where I post most of my content. Uh, I also have a Twitter subscription on Twitter for $10 a month that I post more daily, broad market analysis, chart analysis on your, your big names, Apple, Tesla, all that, as well as trade ideas. So. Uh, not only do I get the questions on my just public Twitter, but also on my uh, subscription as well. So I want to really be clear on what exactly is the difference. And the main difference between a trend line and a trend zone is the thickness of the area that you're looking at. So a trend line is really like drawing something with a pencil. Very precise, very thin. And a lot of the time, the market just does not trade like that. You have prices that reverse before you get to a trend line or a horizontal level. And, and sometimes you overshoot these levels as well. So it's always important to have more of a margin of error on whatever you're looking at. So in this case, let's draw a trend line first. And so I'm using TradingView. If you are using TradingView as well, you just go to the annotation menu here and you go to the top to trend line tools and you have the option to choose trend line or a ray. I personally like to use a ray because you just connect the two points and the line is then extended from there. So in this case, we'll use the ray tool, but you can also use the trend line tool if you want. The trend line tool is just connecting two points and then the line stops. So when you click on the ray drawing, in this case, I wanna start the trend line from the bottom of this uh, trend from, in this case, it was December 28th of 2022. I wanna connect the wick to this wick right here from April of 2023. And when I do that, you'll see here that we have one, two, and then this is our third point here on the line. So a lot of the time, the more points and the more price action that interacts with a particular trend line or a trend zone, the stronger that trend line or trend zone is. So I like to look for trend zones because you have price action really respecting a trend zone a lot more than a trend line. And a lot of the time, as I mentioned, the market is really more of a flexible type of uh, environment. You're not going to get price levels that are respected perfectly. That's why you always want to have a margin of error with a trend zone, not only on diagonal lines. In this case, we're just looking at an upward sloping diagonal line identifying an uptrend in this case with higher lows and higher highs, but you can also use it on a horizontal level as well. And I'll do an, an individual and separate video on horizontal levels and how to use those as well. Now, in this case, you can see here that the main opportunity you had for a potential bounce off this trend line that we were watching was over here, and this was uh, May 31st of 2023. However, you can tell that the price never actually got down to this exact line. And that's because the market just doesn't work like that. You're never going to have an area that is tested perfectly to the cent. That's just not how things work. So what you want to do instead is instead of using a pencil, i.e. the trend line, you really want to use a thick marker. And so that's where the trend zone comes in. So here we've got our trend line. Let's delete that. And then let's go to the parallel channel tool, same area on TradingView. You go to the top of this annotation menu, click over with this arrow, and you go down a little more than halfway and you click what's called the parallel channel tool. So once you click that, same thing, let's start from the wick and we will then connect this wick here. And what I'm gonna do is once I click on that wick to lock it in, I'm then going to move this parallel channel up to the bottom of this candle's body. So now we essentially have a trend zone that is the width of the wick of this candle. So now when you go to that candle that, candle that we're looking at in late May of 2023, you'll see that price actually did interact with this trend zone. One, two, you can also see that at the beginning of this trend line, uh, at the start here in December of 2022, we now, instead of having three points, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, because the bottom of this candle touched the very bottom, the very top of this trend zone. Then you have nine, and then you have 10. 
So now you have 10 points at which price action interacted with this trend zone instead of just three that we had on the trend line. So this gives you a lot more flexibility. It allows you to move with the market, which is never perfect. And this was actually a trade idea that I gave to subscribers simply based on this setup. You had a pretty nice uh, candle here that closed right on this trend zone after a pretty decent move back from around 2641 all the way down to around 23. And so you had a pullback, you had a strong candle right at this trend zone. And the trade idea was simply just a move back up to test the top of this wick, which we did hit the top of this wick. Now, that is a great example of using a horizontal level uh, for a target. So a lot of the time when I look for setups, I'm looking for setups at a bounce either on a support zone or a resistance zone bouncing back down to the downside. In this case, this is an upward sloping trend zone. So whenever price gets back down to it, we're expecting a bounce to the upside. So whenever I'm using that as kind of my setup, a lot of the time I do use my target zones as horizontal levels. The thing with diagonal zones, which is what we're using here, this trend line is a diagonal zone. It's, it's not horizontal. You do have moving targets. That means that at this particular point on May 31st, when we tested this trend zone, this support zone was right around 2275, the bottom of that zone. Well, if price continued up, let's say that price instead bottomed here, moved up, pulled back, pulled back, and then moved down here, all of a sudden that, that support zone is no longer 2275. It's actually, if you looked here, it's right around 2550. So you have to realize that these areas are definitely uh, not static like a horizontal level. That's why I like to use the target zone as a function of the horizontal levels versus the diagonal level levels. It's a lot easier to, uh, to really have a, a precise target like that. And the same thing goes here. For example, if we continue to get a move up, you can use a horizontal level just like you do a trend zone. So if you use the rectangle drawing, uh, it's actually down here in geometric shapes. It's two down from your uh, trend zone tools, or sorry, trend line tools. You just click over here, click the rectangle. And for me, what I do if I was looking for an upside target here, I would just click this and then connect it to the top of this wick here. So instead of saying my target is 2641, now my target ranges from 2640 all the way up to around 2665. So if you wanted to use this in a scaling technique, meaning that you enter a full position and you start to scale out, meaning that you're selling fractional parts of your full position, maybe when you get to the bottom of this zone, that's when you scale out one third. When you get to the middle of this zone, maybe that's when you scale out another third. And then maybe you want to hold the rest of that one third of your position that's left. Maybe you want to hold and see if that breaks above this previous high and ride it until you get some type of sell signal. Every individual trader is going to have a different signal. But let's just say in this case, uh, you know, you hold it and you, you, you wait for a daily candle close above this area. And then, and then maybe you, you continue to hold that and see where it goes. As I mentioned, that's going to differ for every single person in this case. Your zone was from 2640 to 2665, and maybe you use 2640, 2650, and then 2665 as your three scale out zones, uh, price levels for your position. So, you know, this is why you really want to use trend zones, both with diagonal trend lines as well as horizontal trend lines. Uh, I would argue that horizontal lines aren't trend lines because the whole point of a trend line is to identify the trend. I would really just say the horizontal levels are our basic uh, support and resistance uh, horizontal areas. So as I mentioned, I will do an individual video on horizontal levels and, and really touch on how to use these zones in horizontal areas as well. I just kind of mentioned one of them using uh, the previous wick and then this other wick that's slightly higher to create this zone target above. But I will go over that in more detail on the video that is dedicated to horizontal support and resistance levels. Hopefully this video is helpful. One, understanding trend zones. 
Two, how you can draw a trend zone on TradingView, which as I mentioned is simply just going to the trading, uh, excuse me, the trend line tools, clicking the arrow, going down to the parallel channel, and that is how you can add the trend zone versus just the trend line, which is the Ray or the trend line tool on TradingView. Thank you so much for watching. Remember, if you have any questions, you can always comment in the comment section below. If you enjoy these videos, please like and subscribe and put on notifications so anytime a new video comes out, you'll get it. And if you are interested in following me on Twitter, my Twitter handle is in the description as well as a link to my Twitter subscription, which I mentioned is only $10 a month. So give it a shot. And if you like it, really appreciate your support and trying it out. If you don't, I really appreciate you trying it out. And, uh, and if it's not for you, I definitely understand it's not for everybody. Thanks so much for watching and have a great day.